We're now 14 games unbeaten. Mm. And Villa were 11, at least 11 wins in a row. So we kind of, us and Villa kind of started the fall, that form at the end of the season at the same time, really. Yeah. <laughs> So there's a few of them that I'm going to group together uh, because I want to give them a shout out at the end of the, at the end. But uh, start off. Let's start off. We'll go through Tim. So start from the back. Tim Cork. What's the signing he's been? Free transfer as well. Remember, I know that he's come under a lot of criticism, um, but for me, once he's settled, in bear in mind he had he barely played for the last two or three seasons. Yeah. So to bear come into that. a side. That's looking for promotion is not going to be easy. Yeah, bear in mind that he's done well. He's not the best keeper I've seen at Norwich, but he's certainly not the worst. Bear in mind as he's well, been, though. He's been definitely. We're saying bear in mind a lot. Uh, John Ruddy was struggled when he first came in. Yeah. And he then, because he'd barely had the game time, he well, struggled. I don't think he'd struggled. He, he did. First half of the season, he wasn't great. Second half of the season, he was fantastic. A lot like Tim Krull. First half of the season, made mistakes. Second half of the season... Second half of the season, he cut out a majority of those mistakes. Yes, there was still one or two, but like the oh. whole one, whole one I wouldn't put on him. That was, as a team, we didn't read the high press. Ben Godfrey then passed the ball back to him. He panics, as you do, because obviously you've got... Hull was pressing with five players. They had a five-man press. At that point... Tim Krull's only option is to play the ball long, mm. and he doesn't have the time when you're playing when you're being pressed so much. You don't exactly have the time to look up and pick someone out. You're watching the ball come to you. You're thinking, right, I need to just clear this. Did it happen to go to whole player that time? Yes, but how many times has he got it right? Mm. You look at it when we're playing the way we play. It's going to happen from time to time. We'll get it wrong. Um, yeah, yeah, fair. So then. Uh, left back Jamal Lewis. Excellent. Even since like last season. The fact like... last season uh, he came in and he, he drastically improved us. Obviously last season we had Marco Stephenman playing left back for the first half of it. Didn't look great at left back. Um, but he's come in, Jamal Lewis has come in. He missed the beginning of this season as well I think. With injury, like the first couple of games, I think. Mm. Um, he came in, he's done. He's mm. been fantastic. He's done the job excellently. And you wouldn't think he's only, like, 21? No. no. Um, is it 21? 20, I think, actually. Yeah. Um, let's have a look, actually. And hang on. Oh, nine, 1998, so... He's 21 now. Um, what a... What a player. And I can tell you, at the start of the season, do you want to hear our first lineup of the season versus Birmingham? Oh, God, yeah. Our entire back line changed apart from Christoph Zimmerman, wasn't it? Cruel and goal. Yeah. Closer and Hanley centre backs. Yeah. Who can't now get into the team. Marshall right back. Oh, God. Husband left back. Oh. No wonder we conceded twice in that one then. <laughs> Thank God we didn't go through the rest of the season. If we would have gone... We're, well, with the two fullbacks, I think. I mean, because Marshall, admittedly, and a fullback. Marshall was... If we was playing Ben Marshall as a winger, we'd been fine with him there, mm. I reckon. Um, and then we had Tribal Midfield. and Tetty as our two midfielders. Can't really have two ball-winning midfielders. That doesn't really work. Yeah, so there's no playmakers in that middle bit. They're both kind of central defensive midfielders. Um... And then we had Hernandez on one wing, Steepman on the other wing, which is close to what we have now. Pookie was then in behind Rhodes. Yeah, didn't we? we had Pookie playing in behind Rhodes. Now it's Rhodes we playing play in Rhodes. behind Pookie, technically. Because he's well, benched bench, yeah. behind him. So. And then a bench, we had McGovern, Zimmerman, Leitner, McLean, Shabeni, Thompson, Cantwell. Thompson, who has been injured for most of this. Shabeni, who hasn't really managed to get a game. Cantwell has had like, his injury spells, but he's been in a few games. McLean has obviously come back more into it now. Like, yeah. no, I can't remember why he didn't start. Uh, I think it was just he chose to go with Tribal yeah. Teddy for... And then uh, 
well, McGavin obviously, and Zimmerman on the bench who turned out to end up coming into the team. So Mandia went even anywhere near that. Yeah, no, he was he was brought in more for the future, I think, at that point. But then eventually he was like, right, we're going to put him in. Yeah. Um, so then we go, Mike Tarrant's come in. He came in at Ipswich. Of all the games to make your debut, away in a local derby is probably the best one. Yeah. Um, sure. It would have been better had we won it, but to make you date, especially as like an eighteen-year-old, it's your professional debut. Talk about no pressure. Mm. I suppose you couldn't really have done much worse than Ben Marshall did there, but again, Ben Marshall has played out of position, so that's no nothing against Ben Marshall, but got except for the fact also. he missed a penalty against is it he missed a penalty against Sheffield United, wasn't it? Yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, that not was not for us. Uh, so obviously you got uh, it went for us no that was for Millwall yeah uh, so then obviously we got the centre back pairing Ben Godfrey Christoph Zimmerman what a partnership that's been recently uh, I know obviously we've still been leaking goals but for me that's more due to lapses of concentration than anything you look at most of the go- a lot of the goals we've conceded we literally just switch off for a second and that's all it takes. Obviously, in the Premier League, we can't afford to do that. But we'll see. Ben Godfrey's now been linked Transfer with... window. <laughs> yeah. Ben Godfrey's now been linked with the move to uh, Manchester United. So, uh, Rio Ferdinand, no. To be fair, who'd want no. to go to a mid-table club in the Premier League? Like... Yeah, I'd rather just stay at Norwich. Manchester United aren't going anywhere. Um, then, obviously, we play... See, for, th- for this next bit, there's so many people we could pick. Tom Tribal, Moritz Leitner, Mario Vrancic, Kenny McLean. We'll say them as a whole. What a midfield. Like, I mean, they've not... That's our str- strongest for two. That's the thing. There's not been two who have like settled the position like, for the entire season. No. Everyone's been interchanging and everyone has been excellent. Who's come in? Yeah, like... Uh, everyone I feel... who's come in for other people who have been injured... Then been I feel really sorry for Leitner and Vrancic because they did absolutely nothing wrong. They yeah. happen to pick up an injury and then but by the time they come back, there's no place for them because the team's just doing so well. It's like, how can you change it up? Yeah. And whilst I agree with Daniel Farker's tactic, I think in the end we probably could have done, in those four draws, probably could have done with switching it up a little bit. Yeah. Even though the players that were there weren't really doing much wrong, they weren't doing anything wrong, but... We just could maybe have done with it being switched up. Um, Emmy Wendy. Uh, what can you say about him? Argentina. Football heaven. Uh, he's, he's been... Uh, well, skill-wise, a class above other players. Yep. There's a reason him and like James Madison last year, and I'm going to say Jack Grealish, and I know people are going to hate me for it, but there's a reason they get fouled so much. And that's because defenders just don't know how to handle them. Mm. Um, they can't contain them. Like, there's nothing you can do. The only thing you can do is stop them by any means necessary. And if that means fouling them, yeah. you, you take it. And uh, I remember last year against Wolves, James Madison was just... And this was against Wolves, top of the league as well, I will remind you. They ended up winning the league by a mile last season, and even they couldn't contain James Madison. Um, yeah. And this year, every team just about has kicked the hell out of Emi Buendia. I remember against uh, Leeds. Leeds were top of the league at that point. Um, Barry Douglas comes on because whoever was already at left back wasn't able to contain him. Alioski. Uh, yeah, I think it was Alioski. Wasn't able to contain him. They bring on Barry Douglas, and within three or four minutes, there's already been three or four fouls committed against him. Because Barry Douglas just can't contain him. No, he can't. There's know. nothing... You, when you're up against a player like Emi Buendia, in the championship, you're not... You don't... You aren't able to defend against them because they're just too good. Yeah. And I think what helps as well is Emi Buendia comes inside. So, tactically, we have Emi Buendia comes in. That opens up so much space out wide for Max Aarons. Yeah. You look at how, much, how many times this season have I looked over... And Max Aaron's has just got all the space in the world because the fullback basically has to choose between do I go inside and follow my man, Emi Buendia, or do I go wide and look at Max Aaron's? Yeah. You have to choose, and it opens up so much space. And for me, Emi Buendia is absolutely vital to the way we play. Yeah. Hence why 
uh, during that time when we drew four in a row. Yeah, three of them games we didn't have Brendan. Exactly. Um, what is that sheep, by the way? Another man who is absolutely vital to the way we play, and you, there is no way you can sum up the way he plays. I touched on it earlier. He's so unorthodox. He's so unusual. How do you? How would you sum up Marco Superman? Like what, what? He's a salmon. That's what he is. I'd say more crab. Well, yeah. I mean, all these celebrations are so incredible. And then the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say he's an animal. Yeah, an animal of some kind. He is. He is just. The thing is, the last season he was one of the players that received so much criticism. Well, he's playing at left back. Yeah. Which is apparently he could play there. I mean, he went the best. We, we he were told the... he could play there, but I think it didn't. It didn't suit him playing left back in the championship. He went the worst left back. I'd say he was better remember, last season than James. He Huston was a big, was bustling season. kind of player at left back, yeah. and he'd always sprint up and down the field, brilliant at attacking, could hold the ball up, which he's shown loads this season. He like it's really hard to get the ball off him. Yeah, and he'd be it so a lot of energy and be going up and down that wing. Maybe not the best defensively, but he was pretty decent left back, and he was big, bustling. And if you remember, um, there was one similar to that who Norwich fans liked. He was called. Mitchell Dykes, I think his name was. Ah, yes. Um, and Dykes, he was a similar know. kind of build, in a way. Like, yeah. big kind of left-back, who everyone liked. Uh, and I think, yeah, Steepman weren't as good as him. It's I remember, we can keep I remember when Mitchell, Dykes, on, really. when Mitchell but, Dykes left. Um, when, he obviously, he left from his loan. Uh, I was so gutted we didn't sign him. Mm. I wanted us to sign him so badly because he was so good. He was a class above everybody in the Championship. You could see he had... The technique he had, the the awareness he he was just above everybody else we had, but Jamal Lewis has stepped in his place, and I think Jamal Lewis has actually been as good as Mitchell Dykes was. Mm. Um, but with regards to Michael Stevens, you, you, you look at his technique, particularly his running power. Yeah, I mean he's a left Jamal back, so Lewis. You, can, you can forget about that. But he, yeah, he scored against Chelsea with a every other outfield player has scored this season. Yeah, but in the team today. Yeah, um, but like you look at Michael yeah, Steepman's no, technique. Too him, can you? Look at Michael Steepman's technique. It shouldn't work. No. Like as a professional footballer, it it, it shouldn't be as effective as it is. But it he's works just for really him. hard to tackle him because I think yeah. it's just because he's big and strong. Yeah. And he's got better technique than you expect. Yeah, pretty much. That that's pretty much it. Like there, there's not much you can do. Yeah. Um. So next up we'll go Onel Hernandez. I mean, consider Argos. That, yeah, Argos King. Yeah. Um, but I mean, considering what I've known and found out of Hernandez before, and that like I'll be honest, I knew his, nothing of some him. Some of his big and no, but when you, I kind of looked into him, and like it's some of his biggest scoring seasons were only like four or five goals. Oh, were they? And this season he's like come in eight, was ten. It? Was it? Was it ten? Nine. I don't know, something Stuff like, like that. that. And he's scored coming. And not just that, but he scored important goals. Two against Forest. Two against Forest to a draw 3 3, as we said. You've got the one against Middlesbrough to win 1 0. Yeah, important that was game. a fantastic finish as well. Uh, he's had so many other chances as well. He should have more goals, to be fair to him. He does yeah. miss quite a few. He but needs a lot of chances to be able to score one. But he'll, he'll work on that, though. I yeah, think... but he's a very effective player. He's our fastest player, I think. A hundred percent. Just because, um, I mean, we've got three fast Pruki, fullbacks, but... I think Pukki's quite fast as well. But though. I think Hernandez is also general energy, just sums up the team as well. He's yeah. full of energy. Even in the last minutes, he's kind of still running around. And I think the second half of the season has probably been even more kind to Hernandez, to be fair, because it's when he's finally actually uh, got that first team place in the bag. Because I think yeah. he's a bit in and out during the first half of the season, because of Cantwell as well. It let's not, of, we let's like not forget as well, players. last season, he, he joined us in January last season, and yeah. he was, again, one of the players who people were unsure of. We could see he was a bit better than the Murphys, mm. but we weren't sure exactly what it is he would bring. Like, we weren't sure just how good he could become, mm. and he stepped up this season, and he's, he's, been, he, he's been phenomenal. He's been... Yeah. He's the, been the winger partnership of uh, Hernandez and Buendia. Best well, the division. front three... Yeah, just all... Because they all, they all interchange. 
Steakman, yeah. Pookie, Hernandez, Pandir, all interchange, which is, well, I can imagine, is a nightmare for defenders. Like if you're okay, if you're thinking it. if you're thinking right oh I know Hernandez is he's right here I've got him I got him oh shit it's Bandia where where did Hernandez go oh but where's he going like I mean if you're constantly like interchanging players and like they they keep swapping their position Tacti- on the pitch. tactically wh- like what would you do there tactically like would you say you can't the right back can't your, follow him say, all over the pitch would you he? say like stick to your position or would you say just stick with your man and stick like to say who's ever on the side you're on. So you'd go more kind of zonal defending, potentially. So you'd say you so the right back sticks to the right back position, yeah. but then obviously say when we overload the mid the central areas, mm. you've got two centre backs up against four players because our tactics we do overload the central areas. Mm. We have uh, Aaron's running down the right or Lewis down the left, perhaps less so the left side, um, but our our wide players come in. Which means we then have potentially like four on two situations or four on three situations where all of our attacking players are then, in fact, you could even say five because whoever's playing that other role, Francic, Leitner, um, or McLean, they get involved as well. So then we end up with like a five on three position. Mm. And it doesn't necessarily happen all the time, but then you can either play the ball out wide where there's so much space. Or we've just got too many players in that area to do it, and it works perfectly. But uh, so that I think that that's the tactic why we do, why we play the way we do anyway. I think that's the thinking: overload the central areas, open up some space out wide, and then just go for it from there. Um, I remember at one point, I, I think it was under Chris Hewitt, and our tact, our game plan was so like you play the ball down one side, realize it wasn't working, play the ball back to the full back. Play the ball across to the other fullback. Play the ball across to the to the winger, and then if you wasn't able to get across in, you'd then go back and across, and it was just that for ninety minutes. And oh, back to the goalkeeper. Oh yeah, back to the goalkeeper. <laughs> for some reason, Norwich have always just played it back to the goalkeeper. I don't know why. Yeah. Um, but to have our our style that we're playing now is just like it's so good. It's the best football I've seen us play. Mm. But moving on. Team Puki slash Jordan Rhodes, what season up front? Well, um, I mean, this season, I mean, you can't really compare both of them, to be fair. Or but c- kind of include them both together. You can. Rhodes has certainly had his few moments when he scored two against Villa, where he equalised against West Brom, where he scored a goal against Millwall. And he's really helped the season. He just hasn't been able to stay in the team because of Timmy his Puggie's just been brilliant. The best free transfer signing, I think, I what well, I can think of. I said the only other comparison, personally, I can think of is it wasn't a free transfer, but it was the £2 million, considering you know what prices people were going for even then. Um, that Swansea paid for Michu who then went up to score over 20 goals in a Premier League season in his first season in the Premier League. Yeah. I think everyone who's even talking about it then, that is a that was a top signing. £2 million. I understand. Someone over 20 goals in the Premier League. We were he didn't do it for the second season. Him. Yeah. I mean, he, fair enough, he didn't do it afterwards. So we'll see how Pookie does next season. But in terms of getting you know a season out of someone for you know £2 million for Mitsu and a free transfer for Pookie... It's, it's up there with the best deals. The best. I. It's unbelievable. It was. He's been so much more than you could have ever than you could have ever expected when we first signed him. I actually. I. Um. I was very underwhelmed with signing Puki, even though it was on a free. You can't really be underwhelmed with the free transfer yeah. signing, I suppose. But no. we well, were. No. I. I didn't think he would do well. I was like, I remember his time at Celtic, and I remember him being. I wouldn't say awful, but he didn't do much. Mm. He didn't uh, set the league on a light, and obviously everybody knows when you look at the standard. Obviously, you got Celtic and Rangers, and then the rest of the league aren't exactly up there with the rest of them. And he still only made, still only scored nine goals that season. And I was like, well, you know, we got we're going to be facing better teams in the championship. Let's just play. Uh, I was like, obviously, I'm always willing to give players a chance, but. For us to sign and play like Timo Puki, who the only thing I'd known of him, obviously I I didn't know much about his time at Bondby. 
And he, he's, his goal-scoring record wasn't actually as prolific there, I don't think, as what it is at Norwich anyway. And Bromby is playing, I would say, slightly worse league. I don't really know that much about the Danish league, but it's not it's not the championship. It's not got the same reputation anyway. But I also think it's the fact that he, of the players he's had around him, has helped. The amount of goals... He scored from six well, yards. obviously six yards or in the penalty box. He, to be honest to him, I mean, he had that lob against Millwall. He had that finish from outside the penalty area against Reading. He's had a few finishes where he's had to make it himself, and he still against finished Bolton. it. Brilliant goals, but a lot of it definitely has come down to the service from everyone else in that team. Oh yeah, and how it's just all worked together so well this season. It's been particularly Matt Allen's. Max Aaron's setting up team in Pookie has got set up quite a few goals. Yeah, that like that's been the combination that's been like Mag- Max Aaron's can find the space down the right, just whip the ball into the six yard box, and he pretty much knows nine times out of ten team in Pookie is going to be there. Yeah. Um. Obviously, there's times where it doesn't work out, but for the most part, it it works out and it works out brilliantly. So, you know, if even if if, if team in Pookie only scores goals from the six yard box, yeah. if he's scoring twenty of them, I don't really care. Yeah, like yeah, sure. it's gonna be it's gonna be exciting season next season. We'll see who we sign. We'll see kind of what players obviously stay. Here, hopefully all of them, and we'll see how they do in the Premier League. I think it's gonna be very very exciting. Yeah, like um, but with with regards uh, Jordan Rhodes as well, I feel like if he was given more game time, he would be nearly as good as Team Improved. Well, the again with the team we've got, I think for sure like. The chances that he he would have been provided, yeah. Um, obviously, it'll be a shame to not probably see him here next season. I can't imagine he's going to be with us. But um, I think it, it would depends be nice. how much. It'd be nice. If we only have to pay like one or two million. I don't see why we why we don't go for him. Yeah. But if Trevor Wednesday is going to be asking for like say five six million, that that's a big part of our transfer budget gone then. Mm. Uh, so it all literally just depends. Also depends on if we can find anybody. Say if we can find somebody younger in Germany who's just as good for say a million pounds you go for whatever works best for the club and obviously though it, it helps with the regards to the homegrown players which I'm not sure what the homegrown rule is mm. in the Premier League but I know in the Championship we literally just about managed it some weeks but hopefully but yeah no so with the Premier League I think we only literally need like five signings I think yeah, we well, need, and mostly they'll be depth players. So they'll be players for our squad depth. So obviously we need a goalkeeper to push Tim Crawl, um, somebody who is going to compete with him, make him be on his toes, and who's going to say to Tim Crawl like, "Look, if you're not going to be, he's going to be up in, standard. Yeah. I'm taking your spot." Uh, also, a striker to compete with Puky, I think for sure. Yeah, depending um, on you know if Rhodes stays. I I still not. think even if we get Jordan Rhodes, we'll need a different type of striker. Mm. Um, we'll need somebody who can... I think another player kind of similar, maybe a bit more physical than Poogie, but at the same time, you, you want someone who's going to fit in with our style of play, which is yeah. creating chances, not lumping the ball forward. We have to... Say like a Cardiff in the Premier League this season, Yeah, admittedly. We, we need to not do they're a full-on, basically. A great, they're putting such a good fight, Cardiff. But again, like, they're a team that lumped the ball forward... We basically need to not do a team in Pookie. Not do a team in Pookie. Not do, not do a Fulham. Everybody we just talking, to do a team in Pookie. Everybody, everybody <laughs> do a team in Pookie. It's because we were just talking about... No, uh, we need to not do a Fulham. Yeah. Um, and we need to spend wisely rather than spending for the sake of spending. Like obviously, you look well, at we're them... Not gonna, we're not going to have much money anyway. £20 million pound budget. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have the lowest expenditure out of everybody in the Premier League, probably. Probably, well, in recent times. I mean, unless Tottenham decide to do another summer where they yeah. don't buy anybody. To be fair, if we've bought someone, we've bought more than Tottenham have in the past two windows. So, I mean, yeah. we could just admittedly past say... three windows, isn't it? Including last January. Or did they sign somebody last January? Yeah, I think they signed they Lucas. Okay. I think. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, we need to... Who else do we need to sign? Uh, I think another... We need another winger on either side. Yeah, like another maybe couple of players to fit in with our kind of front three of how we play. 
Yeah, but then you look at it, Vrancic can play in behind the striker. Leitner can probably do a job. McLean can definitely do a job there. Well, I, I feel like we definitely need someone else with pace, I think. With regards to Kenny McLean... Uh, I feel like he did a he did a very good job at defensive midfielder, but you can see he he wants to get forward more. You can see like compared to like Vrancic can kind of he he can hold himself back a bit better, mm. um, just in case we lose the ball. Whereas Kenny McLean, you can see first thought for him is just bombard the box, just go forward, just go for it. Oh, <laughs> come on. Um, but yeah. Um, what do you think of the fact that our transfer budget is going to be twenty million? I think pounds? yeah. Do you we think we'll be able to? As well, by the way. Oh yeah, no. We need a, we need another defender. Set it back. Set it back for sure. Um, but, particularly if Tim Closer goes as well. Yeah. And then Grant uh, Hanley probably will be leaving. Yeah. And um, what did you say? Uh, what did you think about the transfer budget of twenty million pounds? Will we be able to get what we need for twenty million? I can't see how we only have a twenty million pounds spent in. Budget. I mean, I think that's a rough budget. I think they'll allow them to go over. Say, for example, there's the um, the young I can't German, see how young when, German that we've been linked with. How when you're champions of the championship? Yeah. How can you end up only having that much to spend? Uh, I don't get it. Because like considering apparently yeah, the playoffs, that's not you get how that's much. not because that's only what we get. That's only what we can afford. That's a case of our structure mm. is that we want to spend smartly, not spend for the sake of it. So we're I mean, saying we're going to. I mean, I hope we do. To... As you say, we've got Pugi on a free. We've got nearly all our players for under like two million. Oh yeah, I'd like to so think that. Say for if example, we can if we find some more gems. Say if we if we find a player. Happen? That's all. Yeah. Say, so, say so we've already spent like eighteen million pounds. Yeah. And we can, and we find a player who is going to cost like five million pounds. Yeah. Who. We, so that will take us to twenty three million pounds. I like to think the board aren't going to go. No, you have your twenty million pound budget. Yeah, that's it. And yeah. they're going to say to you, going to say to them like, look, okay, is this actually going to add to the squad? Yeah. If so, we'll let you have that. Because I do extra. agree. As you say again, like, money doesn't always get you where you want to be. Hundred million pounds. Fulham got relegated. Hundred million pounds. Yep. Has got Fulham relegated. Anyway, players I want to give a shout out to: Michael McGovern and Aston Oxborough, Evo Pinto. Uh, I include Did he play Tim. This season? Include Tim Closer. This, this is what I'm getting to. Felix Parslak, Philip Heiser, uh, Grant play. Hanley. Yes, listen. Just let me finish. Uh, who else was there? There was. Alex Tetty, Louis Thompson, Todd Cantwell. Um, Carlton Morris and Dennis Shabeni. So the reason why I want to say thank you to them is because they haven't done anything to unsettle the squad. They've been players who have been sat on the sidelines watching and they've been absolutely given their all to support the players that are playing. Like, you look at how many times... Um, Timmy Puki scored and Jordan Rhodes has been sat on the bench and gone over and celebrated. And I'll include Jordan Rhodes in that group actually as well. Um, they could very easily have threw their toys out of the pram mm. and gone, I'm too good for this, what am I doing on the bench? Very easily they could have done that. Like an Oliveira type character. Yeah, but none of them have. They've all been so so settled. They've all all done what's best for the squad. I know obviously some of them probably are sat there like in their minds thinking like, well, what am I doing sat on the bench? I want to be playing games. But, like, I have a feeling, like, Vrancic and Leitner next season will start in the Premier League. Mm. Um, even though this season, obviously, they've been a struggle to get back into the side, they're too good not to play. Especially Vrancic's free kicks. But the the players that I mentioned, like, um, Michael McGovern has been brilliant. Obviously, he's been given a, a year extension, which I would imagine... Um, would be he would be told he's going to have more of a mentor role. Mm. He's not going to. I don't think he's going to be first team for us next season, because I don't know. Tim. If it'll, anything, it'll we need Tim another Cole goalkeeper or to, someone else. Yeah, um, I don't know whether he's been told he's going to be second choice or whether he's been told he's going to be third choice. But he signed a new contract, knowing he's not going to be first choice in the Premier League next season. Mm. I would assume. 
So his role next season is going to be more of a mentor role, and it, he seems happy with that. And the players that I mentioned, Ivo Pinto hasn't thrown his toy out, toy out of his pram. He's been at every match. He's always posted about pitch war yellow army. And tomorrow's going to be really sad watching him leave his last ever appearance in a Norwich shirt. Um, I'm going to be sad about that. But uh, the those players, like how many times do you see it at other te- at other teams where? A player isn't happy not playing and just is just like, you know what, I'm going. I don't want to be here anymore. Had a transfer request, I'm gone. Mm-hmm. I, as but far it has as. It's been a positive season, so I don't know who wouldn't want to be part of it, that's all. But, see, if it was me, I think I would be quite selfish and I'd be like, okay, I get that the side's doing well, but I don't want to be sat on the bench. Mm. I don't want to be just. A bit part player. I want to be. I would rather be at, you know, an Aston Villa or somebody who's fighting for the playoffs, and be on the pitch and making a difference rather than being sat on the bench. Mm. So for these, for those players to not do that, for me, it shows the character. It shows the, the squad that we have. But first, most importantly, though, massive shout out to Daniel Farker because he has. Turn the side around completely. Obviously, with Stuart Webber's help. Um, in fact, he's been willing to give youth players a chance. You look at, we were struggling for a right back, and then all of a sudden this young kid comes in who absolutely nobody's bit, well really heard of, Max Aarons, comes into the side. It takes somebody very brave to do that, especially in a local derby, mm. and somebody who actually has the faith in the squad. Yeah. So Who turned out to be the young championship player of the year. So, yes. I mean... <laughs> I mean, what, what else can be said about that? To come in at 18 years old, I think he's now 19, and just absolutely dominate teams. Yes, it's... Yeah, I didn't expect him for sure to do that well. As well as he has. But he's even sco- he's came up with a load of assists, and he's scored a few as well. He's scored a couple, so... Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the thing... Max Harrens, if I feel like Max Harrens gets in the box a lot more though as well than Lewis. Mm. I feel well, like I think Lewis has. He's just not took his chances. Uh, a lot of his chances have been from distance though as well. Well, there was one against Forest when he was like in the six yard box and Pantano one saved it. Oh yeah, one thing I've just remembered as well though, and I, um, it what, the thing which is fantastic to see when we had the parade before the Ipswich match, mm-hmm. it was led by Grant Holt and Darren Huckabee. Mm. That was fantastic. I that, I absolutely loved that. Just getting to see two Norwich legends, somebody who I grew up watching, and somebody who in the more modern, in the more recent years, has been a hero for Norwich fans. Like, especially with the way Grant Holt was treated under Chris Hewton as well, was a bit. Yeah, definitely. That was great to see. Uh... But yeah, no. So I think that's that's about everything. Yeah. It, overall. Summing up, it's been a, such a surprising season. Three words to sum up the season. They can be individual words or a phrase. You go first. Okay. Unexpected. Unbelievable. Farker. My uh... Absolutely fucking awesome. <laughs> I may have bleeped. to bleep that one out. <laughs> I probably won't bleep that out. But, um. but like, literally, it's just like, because it's been so unexpected, um, it's just been also entertaining. Like, we haven't yeah, just gone that's... up with, like, <laughs> uh, doing like more it? defensive kind of way of going up, like Middlesbrough, Tony Pulis way of going up. That's who I was trying to think of. Like, I was like, we've honestly, gone up I watched. Scoring, no, as I said, ninety-three goals with ninety-four points. Every time I've watched Tony Pulis, uh, Tony Pulis's Middlesbrough, was, it's been so dull. And I think we need to take that into context and bear in mind that we have been able to watch some. Like I've seen comparisons to Barcelona, Ajax, Brazil. Ajax were playing the other day, and all I saw on Twitter was, oh, looks a lot like Norwich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, honestly, 
I mean, you could obviously say, you know, oh, we're being biased and, you know, we just think we're better than we are. But some of the football, honestly, has been brilliant this season. Some of the quite quick play and, yeah. uh, like, the understanding, I think. It was after we kind of got more of a settled team. Uh, and some of the play has just been... And the belief has been incredible. We've just... It's been such a good season. One of the best seasons as an Orange fan to finish champions... Yeah, just, yeah, incredible. And I, yeah, hope we can stay up next season. And as I still got season ticket. See more match day vlogs. Um, join us on this journey. And hopefully yes. we can stay up and hopefully it'll be another incredible season. Although, about that, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to go to the first home game of the season. Why? Because I think the Premier League starts 10th of August, right? Oh, God. I'm going to be away in London for uh, Summer in the City. For... Uh, for another video. Yes, that will be another video as well. But um, <laughs> hopefully that first game will be away and then the second game will be at home. Yeah, we'll hopefully. see. Um, but yeah, so it's been, it's been unbelievable. It's been... At the beginning of the season, I thought we would be pushing for... I thought we'd improve. I knew, I knew for a fact we would improve. Last season was... Uh, one of the worst seasons I've seen. Um, well, I don't think it's as bad as when we got relegated from like. No, I mean in terms of like, we were ex we were expecting a lot better than what we got last season. Yeah. Because we we had the players, but we weren't playing the style we wanted. Whereas we knew straight away as soon as Stuart Webber came in, it was a transition. Mm. We knew we was going to end up with a transition, and my camera's about to die, so. <laughs> We've literally used up the entire battery in like two less than two hours. So sweet. I mean, yeah, it's been unbelievable, and yeah, we'll see what happens next season. Yes, supporting this incredible Norwich City team. Uh, on it's the been fun. City. And honestly, you look back, and I know, like I said, my camera's about to die, but I'm going to say quickly: the last ten seasons, we've had four promotions. Yeah. <laughs> they they always say it's an every, incredible time every right? time every time it's like oh the, these seasons don't come around too often. <laughs> <laughs> For the incredible can, season, that way, yeah. no, that way, I mean that way we can think it up. So let's yeah, that. No, I'll definitely. Um, yeah. Right, so down. yeah, we're gonna leave the video there. Um, hopefully, you've enjoyed listening to us yeah, talk about Norwich. Yeah. We're the champions. Yeah. We're gonna be playing in the Premier League next we... season. We are the champions, my friend. Ding, ding. And we'll keep on fighting till the end. Come on! <laughs> um, so, yeah, we're, so we will see you next season because we've got season tickets. So, come back for more match day vlogs, more Norwich City talk, and I will also more maybe. More videos throughout the summer. Yes. Probably talking. If we sign anyone, there'll probably be a transfer video. Ooh, I could do a monthly transfer roundup. Yeah. Hey, hey. Uh, but yeah, cool. so um, let me know what you want to see in the match day vlogs as well. Um, if you've made it this far, then. People going mental. Thank you. I, I doubt that anybody's made it this far because they'll be like well over an hour into the video. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, so. Cool. Let me know, and yeah, feel free to leave a like and a subscribe if you're new. I'm currently on 66 subscribers. I'm getting there very slowly. Uh, I've gained, I've gained like three in this week though, so it's not three. Too bad. <laughs> yeah, in like the beginning of May, my the most I've got in a month is nine, and is I'm it? already on three this this month. So come on. After less than a week. But yeah. Come so, on, people. <laughs> keep subscribing. Uh, yeah. Let me know. Uh, make sure you leave a like if you've made it this far. Because you made it this far, you may as well let me know. If that you made you, it this like, far, you're an incredible human being. You have an incredibly dull life. Like, you, yeah. you need a life. You need to go outside. You're either watching this on the toilet or in bed before you're about to go to I sleep. I don't think anybody's going to be on the toilet for an hour. Well, no. Maybe, like, they've got so... Like, they're thinking, God, how long is this video going on for that they've needed a toilet? So they've been gone and they're, like, still watching it. Or well, they've just stuck it on in the background. Fair, but anyway. They're watching us on the toilet. That's a bit weird. Yeah, please don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's just no. 
I suppose cool. it helps they can't really see my face, so that might be why they stuck around. They're like, oh, it's a video, I can't actually see his face. <laughs> cool. Right. Sweet. Until the next video, see you then. <laughs>